I declare the meeting back in session. We are now in open session, and we will resume regular business of the Bedford School Committee. At this time, I would ask that we stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment, I'd like to ask everybody to bow their head and take a moment of silence for all the people in Ukraine that have lost their lives. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Mr. Durgan? Here. Attorney Walsh? Here. Mr. Shea? Here. Ms. Betancourt? Here. Mr. Rivera? Here. Dr. Marlin? Here. Here. Mrs. Yeah. Okay, the regular meeting at Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School will be held today, Tuesday, April 12th, 2022, commencing at 6 p.m. in the student forum. Okay. Motion will be in order to accept the minutes of the meeting of last month. Motion is made. Second. We have a second. Anything on the question? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So voted. Okay. We need a separate vote for the executive minutes. Motion to approve the executive session minutes. Second. Motion is made and second to approve the executive board minutes. And those will be held until such time as all of the issues are completed. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay, moving right along. Uh, reports, approval of bills. Motion to approve. Motion is made to second. approve the bills. We have a second. On the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Okay, facilities update. At this time, I will ask Mr. Arruda if he could come forward and give us an update. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me this evening. Um, we're going to have a quick slideshow here. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to give everyone an update on what's uh, been going on in our facility here. So the Church Street entrance is uh, approaching its final uh, leg here. Uh, we've got just a couple of things to do here. All the infrastructure is in. Uh, the hardscape is in. Uh, we've met with the uh, uh, landscape uh, architect and the, the flowers and all the pl that entire center area there will be planted in the next three weeks or so. Wait until the end of April, we get into May for that to be, for the weather to be conducive for it. And there's one, uh, uh, thing that we're working with IT on right now. Once we uh, resolve that issue, uh, the uh, the gates will be operational, uh, fully functional, uh, exit, entering the building, exiting the building, different times, the arms will be working. It'll be very nice. Uh, they will have, we'll have a secure entrance and exit to our school coming off of Church Street. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but uh, upon the completion of the, uh, what we call the South Athletic Shed, uh, we, uh, we started working on the North Athletic Shed. Um, our students, our carpentry students, this is a, a product of, uh, of their work. They're doing a, uh, a phenomenal job there. Uh, where we're probably, say, it's about 70% complete there. Um, with, with any kind of luck, if the weather stays with us, by the end of this school year, going into the uh, summer, the uh, North Athletic Shed uh, should be completed also. Here we got a uh, picture of just looks like just two regular uh, restrooms um, in our school. But what we did was uh, we upgraded uh, eight restrooms. We, we did one in collision, one in welding, one near Jared Lucier's office, and five of them around the carpentry area. Um, basically, the doors from, from back in the day, you know, were 28 inches wide, not ADA compliant. Uh, so we. Uh, had to, uh, we expanded the doors out to 36 inches 
as you can see, all the saw cutting uh, around the doors in the concrete. So that was a sizable project for us. Uh, we just completed it. Uh, we have one more door to paint. Um, after that, this is actually taken a couple of weeks ago. It's, it doesn't look uh, like this. All of the, those cuts have been filled in nicely. But um, it, it's eight doors, eight bathrooms that have been upgraded. And slowly but surely, we, we, we were going through all our bathrooms in the school and upgrading them to uh, today's uh, code and making them all ADA compliant. This is uh, this project here uh, is, is uh, exciting for us. Um, if you remember the old machine shop, for those of you who do remember it, it, uh, it was uh, kind of dark in there. Uh, and this is actually the back half of this photo is the marine, the marine shop as it exists today. And the front half here is the uh, machine shop. So what we did here is we replaced all the lighting, the brand new LED lighting. Um, all the T8 fluorescent light bulbs, they were all replaced with LED lights. And again, we're working with our students here in the school. Our electrical shop, our junior electrical shop, uh, has done a phenomenal job working together with them. Um, they actually have a great program in, in, in Google Classroom for the students that teaches them not only just to run the wire, not only just to hang them up, you know, it's showing them the value of converting all of this old style of energy into the new, new style. Uh, where every classroom we do, every shop we do, we're probably saving half the value on electrical costs. So it's definitely worth it in the long run, one, educational, and two, uh, facility-wise throughout the school. So this one was machine tech. We got this one done early in the year. And the next slide, that's collision now. So, uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, the picture looks phenomenal. It looks marvelous. But do yourself a favor. Run down to collision. Run down to uh, machine tech and, and see what those shops look like. And while you're down here, poke your head in welding, okay? See what it looks like now, okay? That's one thing I always forget is to take the before pictures, right? But <laughs> see what it looks like now. And then hopefully by the end of this school year, if not the beginning of the next school year, because we just keep the process going with the shops, um, that whole shop will be converted over to a welding shop. And it'll look just like this one. When that one's done, we'll continue on to the next one. And we're slowly plugging away throughout the whole school. This here was a, a grant that um, they got in engineering and robotics to install that uh, laser piece of equipment. And this whole thing was built in-house. And, and, and I'm particularly proud of this, because when you look at that, I, I see three, four disciplines at work there. It's not just one, you know? We didn't pay for, we didn't buy the cabinets from your local school. We didn't you know, hire a plumber to do the plumbing, run the electrical. You know, through the carpentry, that was all done in-house. You know, it's, it's a great collaboration work between all of us here. Um, it's, it's tucked away down in engineering and robotics, but yet again, if you have the opportunity, please go down and take a look at this project. This is one of my favorites. Now, this is the uh, uh, main bulletin board. Once you leave the meeting here, just look to the right all the way down and you'll see it. The, uh, the glass boards on the side there are the uh, old Hall of Fame that used to be up near my office on the other end of the school. So we, uh, we said we're going to save them and reutilize them in the school. And here we are a couple of years later, they're being utilized here. I've met with Mr. Williams a couple of times, and uh, <coughs> the students and, and, and the group will take over these bulletin boards here. And the students will uh, put all their advertising in here, whether they're running for, you know, uh, prom king, prom queen, whatever it is, a car wash is coming up, it doesn't matter. Instead of just posting things here and there, they're going to have a centralized location right in the cafeteria. And uh, I'll tell you right now, there's second to none. Now, I don't think there's a school or a college out there that has a bulletin board that looks like this one here. And yet I see again, it was done in-house. Okay, great project here. Um, before I talk about that one, I just want to touch base on two or three other ones, which I don't have a photo. One is our security and welcome center. Um, that project is set to get started um, probably in six weeks, at the end of May, beginning of June, even before school ends. Uh, the old business office, right now it's being occupied by a nurse. The nurse's office is utilizing that for our students. So we're going to give them another three, four weeks to utilize that area. And then we're going to go in there and build a new security center for the school. 
Um, all the parts, all the materials have been ordered for the welcome center, just the outside of that security center. We're excited about that. There was an eight week lead time. We ordered it already a couple of weeks ago. So we got six weeks lead time on that material to show up. Once that shows up, we're gonna start building that. So that project will get started in six weeks or so, and that'll run right through the summertime. The other project that we got going on in a long time waiting is our cosmetology shop. So that, uh, excited about that one, uh, so well deserved and uh, the, the shop really needed it. Um, we, we've just finished purchasing all the uh, materials, all the chairs, all the sinks, all the cabinets, everything has been ordered. And in today's society, they told me, oh, it'll be another 12 weeks before it shows up. But, uh, uh, but that's okay. We're, we're on schedule, we're good for timing. We have a contractor on board, um, reputable contractor. We've met with them a, a couple of times already. Uh, so we're excited about that project. Again, that project will start the day the seniors leave. The seniors, whatever day the seniors leave, we're going into that shop and we're going to start our, our demolition work at that time. Uh, so we're excited about that. So it'll be the welcome center, security center, and cosmetology shop all going forward at the same time during the summer. Final project that it's behind the scenes, but it's uh, just as important, if not more important. Uh, it's it's our HVAC project. We we do have an HVAC project going on right now. This project includes uh, replacing existing air conditioning units in the rear of our school, uh, replacing two heating and ventilation systems with one new singular rooftop unit. Um, and again, that's in the rear of our school. This change is going to allow to provide cooling to some shop areas that have never had cooling in our school. Uh, these changes fix failing equipment. These changes will remove obsolete equipment it doesn't even exist, you can't even buy parts for them anymore. And better yet, it provides additional ventilation with better control so that we can control the ventilation in our school. So it's, it's a project that no one will see. Um, it's, it's behind the scenes, but uh, trust me when I tell you it's, it is well worth it uh, for everyone in our school. So again, that one will occur. It's going out to bid next week. So if all, if all was according to plan, we should start it sometime in the summertime. And last but certainly not least, save this one for last, this was the South Athletic uh, Shed. It's been completed now for a few months, but you know, it was the last thing missing was the, uh, the logo. Uh, that came in uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, working with our team, our facility team, and our carpentry team, and uh, the, the, the logo was up. Let me show the last picture. Uh, you know, I may get excited about these little things, but man, that looks awesome. You know, look out at that football field. You know, every time you go to a football game or a track field, at nighttime you're going to have an LED light shining right on the bear's head there. No one will forget they're in bear country when they come out in, 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 into our fields. Uh, we're excited about that project. Uh, it, it's finally done, 100% with that right there. Um, and before I leave, I want to thank um, everyone. In, in the department that I have the privilege of overseeing. They're a, a great group of people, facility management, whether it's the maintenance group, whether it's the grounds group, whether it's the custodial group under the direction of Kathy Farias, or whether it's the CBTE teachers that I work with every single day in our school, the students who work with us in all of our projects. Thank you. It's a team effort to get that one you see right here. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Arudo? Any comments? Mr. Coleman, just to say again, a great job. And, and you talk about collaboration all the time, but I think that's huge. And that's for the public to know that our students are putting into the building so that they've done something themselves with it. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Motion being on to accept his report. Motion to accept. Second. Made second. Further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So voted. Aye. Mr. Ruda. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, technology, Mr. Pius. So kind. <laughs> So, 
technology update for this year. It's been quite a year. Uh, we thought that uh, things were going to get easier post-pandemic, but that wasn't the case. A couple of focus areas, digital learning, area, digital learning resources, support, and planning. just want to touch base on some of the things that the technology department does manage. Um, we have the Wi-Fi. We have 265 indoor access points, 49 outdoor access points, 39 servers. We manage 184 different types of software <coughs> for a vocational school with lots of different trades. They all require special software. 425 laptops for faculty and staff. Chromebooks, we have 2,992. Cameras, the surveillance system, 97 cameras that we manage. iMacs, MacBooks, 124. Phones, our new phone system, voice over IP, 315. And um, let's see here, I can't see, yeah. Managed switches, 21 throughout the building. So besides the hardware, we, always, we also manage the user accounts. We manage 3,500 accounts, which includes students, faculty, staff, uh, Delta Ed, GMB, VTI, coaches, and other special accounts. Technology support, uh, we thought that it was going to go down post-pandemic, but it's actually increased. Uh, with our new uh, ticketing software, with FMX, we now have students submitting tickets. We have parents, guardians submitting tickets, along with faculty staff. So since August 16th, 2021, we have resolved 3,240 requests. The end of the school year is a tough time for us. Things have gone a little easier. Uh, this includes phone support, video calls, uh, in-person support, and a lot of uh, issues replacing devices and um, handing things out to students. This is kind of a breakdown of uh, you know, what our team does. It's somewhat changed since the beginning of the fiscal year. We've lost a few people, but we've added a few people. Since the pandemic, we've gone to one-to-one -one Chromebooks. Every student has a Chromebook. It's also um, in our asset management uh, system where we keep track of who has which device. Uh, ninth graders through um, the juniors will, have, will be able to keep their devices throughout the summer for summer school or any enrichment programs. Uh, grade 12, the seniors, when they graduate, will, we will be collecting their Chromebooks. We will evaluate the Chromebooks and we're going to reissue them as loaners or replacements as needed. Uh, our school is not a BYOD, a, a bring your own device, uh, just for security reasons. A lot of students and, and guests ask to bring their own devices, but uh, we want to make sure our network is uh, secure and, and our data as well. Uh, Chromebook repairs, we've had a lot of them this year. Um, we've turned one of the computer labs to our technology services uh, area. Uh, which is managed by one of our part-time, uh, <coughs> which is Tyler Stolmeyer. And we've sent, well, he's sent 340 Chromebooks back for repairs. Uh, one of my visions is to, um, you know, they're, in, they're insured, but after the first incident, some sort of fee will be required for that device, because what we're seeing now, we have, we have students who are bringing back broken Chromebooks several times throughout the year. Um, so it's just important that uh, we kind of take care of the Chromebooks and hold students accountable. It may not be 50, it might be 10, who knows. Uh, well overdue is our library uh, digital catalog. We've upgraded to a cloud version uh, for <coughs> many, many years. The card catalog was only accessible within the building, and since then we've moved it to the cloud. 
updates, upgrades, and some completed projects. Uh, we're about to release the Copy Center ticketing system, which allows teachers, uh, faculty, staff, to submit the request to the Copy Center electronically, and they can follow along with their request is on the, uh, in the process, and they'll know when to pick it up. Uh, work group printers, uh, that, was a, that was a tough one to move forward with. We had about 300 printers, and we had you know, one person just servicing printers all day. And anyone that works in IT knows that printers are always broken for whatever reason. So we've moved to a centralized uh, work group printer, printing uh, situ uh, solution. And we have about 50 work group printers, but we still have some uh, printers in classrooms, uh, media, IT, business tech, uh, any, any print-related <coughs> shop areas. Uh, we've also assisted security with the ALICE training. Uh, they have a designated area. We've upgraded that with an emergency copper line for phone. Uh, they have the PA system. They have an internal phone. They have a docking station, a backup computer. It's battery backed up as well, so in case of any bizarre situation, um, they'll be all set when it comes to technology. Uh, vape detectors, uh, right before the pandemic, we had four, and since then we now have 39. Well, 33 are online, and six, we just need to um, get them online. Uh, we also are going around upgrading and replacing smart boards. Uh, because of the pandemic, we also, there was a shortage it was probably, probably about 20 classrooms uh, once we returned to in-person learning that were waiting for their smart boards to replace. But because of the, the shortage and uh, shipping situations, uh, that was delayed. So just a few months ago, we ended up getting all of them in and they're all installed. So we probably replaced about 20, 25 uh, smart boards um, that were broken. And a lot of these smart boards were purchased about 15 years ago. We also did a security assessment on our network uh, to see uh, areas that needed to be improved, uh, security uh, to protect our data. Uh, that was quite intensive. Uh, we're almost complete with the campus-wide internet access. So inside, uh, we have plenty of uh, Wi-Fi coverage, but on the outside, we're starting to turn on access points so that no matter, no matter where you are on campus, uh, you'll be able to access uh, the Wi-Fi. So teachers will be able to um, go outside with students in their Chromebooks for whatever reasons, uh, taking the, the classroom outdoors. Uh, E-Hall Pass, again, that was started right before the pandemic, but we have all teachers utilizing e-hall pass now, so we've moved away from the paper pass, and we average about 1,100 to 1,300 passes per day. Uh, we did a lot of work the last few months with our servers, patching them up and upgrades. Uh, they were, the servers were brand new back in 2019, but they needed to be um, some upgrades. We're also going to upgrade the memory during April break. Uh, lots of infrastructure improvements, a lot of cabling, uh, requests for new network jacks, new offices, new rooms. Um, Frontline, which is the new teacher evaluation system that we're working our way through. Uh, it is online and the um, majority of teachers have dove into that system. Uh, engineering computers, we purchased 66 and they were installed. Again, there was a little bit of delay with those computers because of the shortage and shipping delays. And we also implemented a new document translation system called Sistrian. It's available to teachers. They just have to request a user account, and that can be accessible from anywhere. Uh, basically, it's, it's, you drag a document to Sistrian, and Sistrian will just uh, you know, translate it for you. It's not like a copy and paste like Google Translator. Some upcoming projects. Um, we definitely need some new computers throughout the building. A lot of the classrooms haven't been, um, we haven't replaced the computers in quite a few years. One of them uh, is drafting. We've already replaced two of the, their classrooms. Uh, we need to replace one of them. 
Uh, B328, which is Kathy Chase's room, uh, needs new computers. Media technology, they're basically iMac computers. So we'll only replace uh, one of the classrooms this year. And dental, dental hasn't been touched in about 10 years. So um, infrastructure upgrades. Through E-Rate, we're going to replace network drops for 30 classrooms. The security center requires a new wiring cabinet, which is called the IDF. New switch, new cabling. Uh, that's again uh, a big project. Uh, the data center this summer will will have a new on-prem backup system and new cooling. And we're also upgrading our internet speeds uh, in and out of the building. We went from 300 megs to one gig, and two gigs, and now five gigs within three years. And that's also through E-Rate. Um, and finally, I just want to thank uh, the team. Um, we tend to move faster than data. Um, without them, um, I mean, we, we work well together. It's, uh, it's a team effort. Um, this school, uh, we've, we've dealt with some challenges, uh, but we've always uh, persevered through these, uh, these, these issues. But I want to thank Al Lima, um, who's, he's the veteran of the department, uh, Patrick Kudo, uh, Matt Bluen, who's uh, a new hire, Tyler Stolmeyer, again, part-time help, Nick Henner, uh, the newest hire, and of course, I uh, couldn't do any of this without Donna LeBrecht, who's my admin assistant. Thank you so much. Dr. Mullen, you're not there on the screen, but... Questions, Dr. Mullen? No. Okay, a motion being no. on acceptance report. Motion to accept the report. Motion made. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah, motion made and second. All have a further on the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. At this time, I would ask Mr. Watson, Superintendent Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, two quick uh, shout outs this month, and as always, we could uh, thank people for their work. Um, as we roll into the April vacation, I know folks are certainly looking forward to some time um, away. Um, I want to just call out Bev Rebello um, from Dental Assisting this month. As Mr. Williams mentioned last month, she's kind of spearheading for us the Skills Plus initiative on the CBT side with freshman uh, teachers. So uh, it's part of her leadership project, and um, uh, she's getting quite an experience. And so I just want to take a moment to kind of publicly acknowledge that effort from, on her behalf and, and the work that she's doing for us across our career technical areas. Um, and also want to uh, recognize Donna McCann and Bob Watt for their work in kind of spearheading the uh, advisory dinner for us uh, last week. Um, it's a good example of some of the tasks that, um, that we need to complete on a kind of biannual basis um, that their office is kind of leading for us at this point. So I just want to recognize those contributions as well. Any questions? Okay, moving right along, uh, parent communications, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, in your packet of the most recent uh, POSIP reports, you'll see uh, for each grade, uh, these are done again bi-weekly. We provide them to you each month. I would comment um, that family engagement has taken over uh, receipt of these uh, POSIP reports. And as we've talked about during the course of the year, one of our primary goals going into the next school year will be to increase participation from families in responding to the bi-weekly uh, possible surveys. Um, so over the next several months, we're going to be we're kind of onboarding our two new family engagements folks under uh, Yolanda uh, Dennis. And so uh, the goal will be that they'll be much more versed into the operations of the building by September and be able to field those questions and respond quickly and in real time uh, to parents. And so we're hoping that those kind of efforts will help to increase participation from families as we go into the 2022-2023 school year. Comments, questions? Possible report? Okay, moving right along. Addison report of Principal Williams. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. As you wait for the slides to come up, I'll just mention uh, today I'll be talking about the HVAC program, the history, and ELA as well as the science programs. But I just want to mention uh, the months of March and April, obviously, March being the longest month for being a teacher and being an educator. We made it through. 
So kudos to all of us getting through here at Boca Tech. Um, I also just want to mention, there's just been so many things going on. I want to give a public uh, you know, praise to Sue Demers leading the ELA MCAS in March. That's a school-wide effort uh, with the help of teachers, TAs, et cetera, as well as the Alice training. Um, I want to publicly acknowledge Leanne Fisher and everyone else who helped do that. Uh, but moving on, is that the first? Also compliments of Donna McKinn. I could never make a beautiful slideshow like that. <laughs> so shout out to her. So our history teacher, Ryan Sylvia, um, every year annually across each trimester does a culminating field trip with his history students. And so here you see some pictures of his students downtown New Bedford. Um, Ryan has an affinity for the local history here in New Bedford. So you see our students at the Fishing Heritage Center. You see them at the New Bedford Whaling Museum. On the next slide, we see Siemens Bethel, City Hall, the downtown branch of the New Bedford Library, as well as the Planetarian Theater. It's a great field trip, and I know our students really love it. I wish all of our students could, have, could be exposed uh, to the rich history in, in New Bedford, as well as behaving in Dartmouth. On to science. So, in life sciences and physical science, uh, the teachers in that department have been incorporating hands-on activities since the start of the pandemic. Um, some examples include building models of DNA and showing the process of DNA replication, and also building bridges to show forces in engineering concepts, as you can see in the illustrations here on this slide. Ms. LaCasse. One of our longtime ELA teachers is in the Leadership One program. She is an aspirant leader. Um, she's been a longtime educator, does a great job with that. And her plan in the Leadership One program is to focus on, her project for the Leadership One program is to focus, in, focus on the impact that the pandemic has had on students' skills and literacy by analyzing a variety of data to identify, to identify trends and examine which of the eight strands of literacy need our intervention to prepare students for college and the workforce. I can't wait to read the conclusions of that, that uh, study and those findings. Our off-campus program, again, our off-campus program consists of HVAC, plumbing, carpentry, and electrical. They're doing amazing work. I think the best illustration is of the work that they're all um, doing out in the community, uh, but particularly our plumbing students, they're working on the same thing that Mr. Aruda spoke about earlier, the, the Wazer jet that we saw, that's the beginning aspect of it, just the metal framework that the plumbing students were working on before putting in the, uh, you know, the, the faucet components to go to the Wazer jet that is now in the engineering and robotic technology space. Again, in-house work that our students are doing, state-of-the-art work, it's always great. This slide illustrates a this is our HVAC program. They welcomed a representative from the Sheet Metal Workers Local Number 17 for a career opportunity presentation. Local 17 represents workers in the sheet metal, air, rail, air, rail and transportation industries, or better known as SMART. John Cody came to us. Um, he is a labor management representative for the Northeast Regional Council of SMART, and he explained the history of Local 17 and also the many past projects to encourage the students to get into that field and even become part of the Local 17. Here you see to the left one of our students, uh, a couple of our students at the Lloyd Center, as I had mentioned before. Uh, Lloyd Center is an amazing project that our students have been working on for the last couple of years in Dartmouth. Uh, again, that's HVAC, plumbing, carpentry, and electrical. Particularly here, we see a couple of our HVAC students installing a vent for a heating system there at the Lloyd Center. And if you ever take a ride out to the Lloyd Center in Dartmouth, it's beautiful. It's come a long way. And they just put the roof on the deck that's outside. It's open to the public. So if you ever want to take a picnic, that's the spot to go to. So great work to our students doing work out there. Mm -hmm. 
And that concludes our artisan report. Again, that can't, can't be done without the great work of our staff and students here at Bullpen. So, major shout out to all of them, as always. Thank you. Any questions or comments? No questions or comments? A motion made in order? Again, I think this is great to get ahead of time so we can read it before we come in, and then you add a little flavor to it. But uh, my hat's off, too, for all the areas that you've talked about and the ones that will be coming in the future, because this is a great report to tell us, as Scooby members, what's happening on a daily basis. So thank you. And I just have to say, sometimes it, it gets a little frustrating because you know in the back of your mind there are just a long list of things that can be added to this. It should be more like 10 pages. This school reminds me of like the Civic Center. It's just always something going on, always great work. I can't even keep up with it as a principal of school. It's just amazing how many opportunities are afforded to our students by the staff here. So much appreciated. I think sometimes we forget that. And uh, give it a five page or so. <laughs> No Are there any other comments? No other? Motion being honored to accept this report. Motion to accept. Motion made. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. And now we have a effervescent student representative, Sarah. And you would like to get up and speak at the podium? You may do so. I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> I'll switch it up a little bit today. Alrighty. Um, so to start off, um, well, first of all, thank you, Mr. Toomey. <laughs> um, to start off, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about the Vogue Tech Theater Company. Um, so they had their annual, um, well, not so annual, obviously, the past couple years, but usually their annual um, spaghetti dinner. They hosted that on Saturday, March 19th. The fundraiser was a very, very successful um, fundraiser as it helped raise um, a bunch of money for um, building sets and the props and the costumes and just everything to make their um, upcoming spring show always magical. Um, so they are performing the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Um, the show will be on May 6th, 7th, and 8th, so May 6th and 7th, um, the show is at 7 p.m., and then May 8th is the, um, the 2 o'clock show, so you can get tickets either at the door, um, ask one of the students that it is involved in the, um, the theater company, or you can go to Miss Morrissey, Marion Morrissey, um, she's kind of like the director, head of the theater company here, so you can definitely go buy a ticket many different places around the school. Next up is our BPA program. So they had their leadership state conference um, this past month. 40 students competed in this year's state leadership conference and 57 um, competitive awards were won by the students here at Vogue. 32 out of 40 students are eligible to attend uh, the BPA leadership conference from May 4th to May 8th. So congratulations to those students and all the students, all the 57 students that were involved. Um, next up, is our GMBBT Kindness Day. So that was on April 1st, um, and Miss New Bedford's Outstanding Teen 2022, Hannah Lima. Um, we were fortunate enough to have her come to the school and incorporate Kindness Day through multiple aspects of the school. Um, I know students were able to give her a tour of the, of the school so she could see these different acts of kindness. I know Child Care painted um, Kindness Rocks for some of their teachers, so that was very nice. Um, aspect of the day um, and her I guess social impact um, it is time today transformation tomorrow creating a culture of kindness through the power of time so it is a very very good um, social impact and I'm so grateful that we're able to bring it here to evoke and that the students got to be involved in that um, next up is the junior banquet so that is coming up quickly on May 14th like I mentioned, I think at the last um, meeting, it is spy themed, so that's pretty cool. Um, and tickets are going to be sold uh, shortly for the students so they can go and enjoy the night at their junior banquet. Uh, next up is our spring fling. So this is the first year that we had a spring fling here at Voc. Um, this is an after prom fundraiser to raise money for the after prom and the uh, seniors this year. 
Um, so that was held on March 26th. It was open to all students, and it was a very, very, very good, successful fundraiser. Um, they raised, let me see here, I have the number, um, $4,483 just from that fundraiser. So like I said, very, very successful. Um, so just thank you to Ms. Gaspar and the entire After Pump committee, all the teachers, faculty that um, volunteered their time to decorate and check students in and um, just help make it a really good success. And then along with the spring fling was also um, our Miss Vote Tech. Um, so that was kind of brought back, like I said, um, from 2002, that was the last one that we had here at Vogue. So Erica Lugo, who is a senior um, in the diesel shop, she brought that back to Vogue to kind of get um, senior girls involved, as long as, as well as senior guys who get to participate in Mr. Vogue Tech. Um, so this was a great way to get them involved and kind of bring it back for the future years coming. Um, People's Choice, Erica actually won, so that is a great job to her because she definitely did put in the effort to um, bring this back, like I said, so congratulations to her. Um, second runner-up was Azalea Burns, first runner-up was Caitlin Pereira, and then um, our Miss Vogue Tech was um, Sarah Lopes. Not really sure who she is or how she won. <laughs> why she won, but that's okay. Uh, next up is Mr. Votek. So, like I said, another after prom fundraiser. Ms. Gaspar is definitely going pedal to the metal to get these fundraisers going, and she's doing a great job at it. Um, so we had Mr. Votek, uh, that fundraiser this past Friday, April 8th, and again, a great success. They raised uh, $6,200, and 400 tickets were sold. So um, the 13 participants got to get their time to shine on stage, show their acts and stuff. Um, the second runner-up was Harrison Quinton. The first runner-up was Ethan Fagundes, and this year's Mr. Book Tech was Marcus Britton. So congratulations to all the boys, and especially the ones that won. So that was a great fun. <laughs> Ms. Gaspar is really pedal to the metal with these fundraisers, same with the rest of the after prom committee, because there's another fundraiser that is coming up actually this Saturday, April 14th. I hope all of you can attend. <laughs> um, it is a comedy show um, where three comedians will perform for a 90 minute show at Whites of Westport. So there's open seating, um, or you can reserve a table for about eight to 10 people. Um, tickets are $20. The show begins at 8 p.m. Doors open at 7, so it gives you a little bit of time to socialize and get ready for some good laughs. So if you're sitting home on your couch, which I mean, nothing wrong with that, but if you're sitting home on your couch this Saturday and you're like, want some laughs and a good time, definitely go and support the After Prom Committee and have a good time at the comedy show. There will also be raffle prizes, so if you do end up going, hopefully you win a raffle prize. Um, so yeah. And then lastly um, is our Skills USA member of the month. So that is Sophia D'Almeida. She is currently a sophomore. Um, and she participated in the, let me see here, Exploratory Project Demo Competition. I knew I was going to try and butcher that. I didn't want to. But um, she won gold, actually. So that is very, very exciting for her. So congratulations to Sophia. She, started Skills USA, I believe, this year, and she just fell in love with it. She plans to continue it throughout the rest of her high school career, which I encourage her to do, because it's just such a great opportunity for all students to get involved in. Um, and she plans to um, become a Skills USA alumni after she graduates, so to keep staying in the Skills USA realm and um, hopefully become a Yellow Jacket in the future. So congratulations to Sophia. Um, for all the work that she has done. Mm -hmm. and, um, you can definitely see the work that she did because she, she won gold. So that concludes my student representative report. So thank you. Are there any questions or comments of Sarah? There is always. Go to the comedy show this weekend, guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sarah. What, yes. what time does the comedy show start, Sarah? It starts at 8. Oh, hang on. Sorry. It starts at 8, but doors open at 7, so it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to get there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. 
Motion be in order to accept the report. Motion to accept the report. Motion made. We have second. a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Dr. Bart. Okay, at this time we will move into new business. At this time I would ask uh, the Commission of the Board to move two items up from new business, which is item I and item C. Motion will be in order to move those items up out of order. Make the motion. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. The motion made and seconded. Anything on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So voted. Okay, item I, which we'll take first, is the vote to ratify the contract between the Beffitt Vocational Education Vocational School District and the Greater New Bedford Educators Union, which is uh, Unit B, I believe it is. Okay, at this time I would ask for a motion to ratify the proposal that was brought forward. Move to ratify the contract. The motion is made to ratify the contract. Second. We have a second. On the question. Mm -hmm. Maybe nothing on the question. Do we want a roll call? No. It's up to you. You don't need. Because uh, you got somebody zooming you, you're supposed to. Yeah, right. Yeah. Zoom. Yep. Okay. We'll have a roll call vote because of the fact that we have a Zoom meeting. Mr. Durrigan? Yes. Attorney Walsh? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Ms. Bettencourt? Yes. Mr. Oliveira? Yes. Dr. Marlin? Yes. Yes. Mr. Toomey? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Sure. We have uh, Mr. Perry? Yep. And Mr. Kevin, I know Miss Kevin. <laughs> and Mr. Moniz from the and Mr. Moniz. And Mrs. Pimentel. And Mrs. Pimentel.
One letter at a time. We are. We'll have to let Mal and Don, Mrs. Rivero sign them when they come back. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Mike or Kevin would like to say anything, but I would like to thank you all for ratifying the vote. Um, I would also like to thank our MTA rep, Adam Patton, for, his, for all his work. These two guys right here, if you don't know them, they are extremely different from one another. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in such a complimentary way because they really balance what we needed in a negotiation, negotiations team. And also thank you to all the other teaching assistants who uh, put in so much time to make this happen. They, uh, they really exemplified what it is to be a team of union members because they gave when they felt it was necessary to give and they stood strong when they felt it was necessary to do that. If I could, if I could add one thing, just because I appreciated what Serge had to say. Um, you know, I in this process, I found that um, there's that change is possible, and the best path to change is controversy with civility. And I think uh, that I'm I'm proud. I, I know I'm proud of everybody that participated in this process for remaining civil and, and bringing us the change we needed. Thank you. I have something that I can't be outdone by Mike. Um, so really, before this started, I was the nice guy and Mike was the mean guy. That's right. They had to switch it around and told me I had to be the bad cop. So, but not just me and Mike, CC, Colleen, a whole bargaining team was solid, and um, I'm actually going to miss the meetings. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in now. So, uh, so let me just say how much I appreciated um, the kind of honest conversations that we were able to have, both uh, at the table and in, and in my office. And so I want to also publicly recognize that. Um, you, you both did a great job representing uh, members of, the, of Unit B and the teaching assistants, and I thought the team did a great job as well. 
um, in those sessions. These are not easy conversations ever, uh, but you're 100% right. When you're able to have those conversations with civility and listen and talk and have that dialogue that goes back and forth, it, it's unfortunate. It takes some of the time that it takes, but at the end of the day, hopefully both sides have an agreement that we can live with and step forward with and do the work uh, on behalf of our kids in the district. And so I just want to publicly uh, acknowledge um, proud to work with these these guys and the team and our team uh, being able to step forward here and, and get this contract resolved. So thank you very much. Thank you. A wise judge many years ago told me after a trial, he said, if both sides walk away a little unhappy, it's probably a real good verdict. So I think that's probably what we got here. Both sides are a little unhappy, but I think it's a real good end result. And I think it's time to do the business of the school and I hope there's no hard feelings between anybody left. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay. I'll believe a vote is needed. We've already voted on it. Okay, uh, moving right along, uh, we're going to move up to item C, which is the superintendent's Watson, uh, his entry findings. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Uh, so in your packets uh, is a full copy of the report on entry findings, as you know, at your direction. Um, I conducted an entry plan um, upon assuming the superintendency of the district. Um, tonight, I want to show uh, a quick PowerPoint that highlights some of those findings um, and kind of talk about not only what those findings were, but also what the next steps are for the district as we, as we move forward with this. So, um, I will advise that uh, you folks have now seen the full report. The report will be shared with all members of the school community um, later this week before the vacations. So they also have access to the document, can read uh, the full text of its entirety should they choose to, and we'll also make that public and available to the community at large. It's efficient tonight. So the PowerPoint presentation, as the report is, is separated into four real areas, an introduction, an overview, an identification of the emerging themes, and then a summary and next steps. So in the introduction, um, I believe that the entry plan process uh, that was underway really afforded me a unique opportunity. Um, having six months to transition into the role of superintendent director is a gift uh, to be able to uh, have the time to not only listen and interact with different stakeholders, uh, both inside of the school community, but also outside the school community help to really sharpen my focus. You know, I've been here a long time, 15 years. Um, but with each role change, you see things in, in a different light. And uh, you often, oftentimes have to listen to where other folks are in that process to be able to understand um, how they're thinking and feeling. And so in the spring of 2021, right through the fall of 2022, I held uh, more than 120 uh, individual stakeholder meetings with both internal and external stakeholders. In addition to those interviews, I reviewed documents which are outlined in the report, visited classrooms and observations that provided qualitative and quantitative data that I was able to triangulate into my entry plan findings. The purpose of this report is to communicate my findings to the school community at large, identify emerging themes, patterns, strengths, and challenges that have been identified, and to use those as part of a building on our successes to address those challenges that remain. Overview. Greater New Bedford Vote Tech, as we've talked about a lot this year, has a very long standing and dedicated faculty, many of whom came to school here and have dedicated, if not all, but much of their professional careers to this institution. It's also a known fact that many students from our Sydney communities seek an education here. We have more than 1,100 applicants every single year to fill our incoming freshman class. So the report which is now in your packets and become public after tonight, details information that I've reviewed over the last 12 months. That includes interviews with key stakeholders, key academic and CVTE achievement data, document reviews, and those observations I mentioned at the outset. Here are the emerging themes that I've been able to identify after all of these reviews. Number one, provide equitable access for all. Number two, ensure that high quality instruction is happening in all of our academic and CVTE classrooms. Three, work to improve the school climate and culture for all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And finally, the word that was heard the most is improve communication 
between all stakeholders. Theme one, providing equity and access for everyone. Our mission is to ensure that equitable access to all of the school's educational programs is available for all students at all times. The stakeholder conversations I had regarding equity and access, which again is not in just internal folks, but external folks from our sending districts as well, supports four key areas. Number one, that we adopt a process in our CVTE programs that ensures students are moving towards Chapter 74 state learning standards. And that was a position validated by a general advisory committee chair people who spoke about the need for trained artisans in the workforce and in our region. Number two, support, support, support our career technical teachers with planning time and resources that they need to address student learning needs in respective programs. We have talked about class sizes uh, for a long time in this district. Um, and as a former academic teacher, it's no secret in a vocational school with twice as many students because of the cycle rotations that you have uh, in, in some comprehensive districts. In vocational programs, while there are less students assigned to each teacher, each teacher is responsible for those students for six consecutive hours per day. How do we keep students actively engaged in the learning process for six hours per day? Our job is to make sure that we're providing our teachers with the tools and support that they need to be able to improve the quality of instruction that we have in our classrooms. Our people do a great job every day. We've talked about this every month. They're skilled tradesmen, they're skilled tradeswomen in the, in the workforce. They know their trade. Our job is to support that education each and every day in our classrooms. Our academic programs need to continue to build upon the state assessment results the Department of Education puts forth every fall. And as I've said publicly for years, that is not about what the results are on the MCAS test. The biggest indicator for progress is student growth. Unfortunately, it doesn't count for the most uh, in the state accountability frameworks. But there is absolutely no reason that our students can't grow at a rate faster than the peers statewide from 8th to 10th grade. I have said from day one, the faith I have in our academic teachers to be able to do that uh, is exactly what our stated goal should be, regardless of what the test score is at the end of the day. The SGP measure does one thing. It compares like performance for middle school across the state in the 10th grade year. And I'm willing to bet that our folks can have those numbers grow at a rate that is faster than the average student in the high school. That's what we need to sustain. I jumped ahead on me there. Was there one more for number two? Mean two. Access. Keep going. Right there. So the second point I want to make is that we, you know, most teachers volunteered that had it not been for their colleagues during the pandemic, they may not have been effective. In the re or as effective in the remote learning environment. And so a special shout out to those people who really helped to support one another by sharing effective strategies and modeling best practices, especially during the pandemic, to be able to help support the education of all kids. Theme three, improving school climate and culture. Stakeholders need, shared the need to improve school climate and culture as the organization changes. It's important that we build, but also strengthen the relationships with the school's new labor unions. It's important that we support educators through shifting expectations at the school and build collaboration. We need to organize the district's administrative structure in a way that addresses this changing reality and recognize the social emotional impact that we've talked about now for more than two years for students has also impacted the adults our students, staff, faculty, parents, and families. Finally, theme four, communication improvements between stakeholders. This, as I mentioned at the outset, was the most frequently utilized word or phrase out of the 124 plus interviews that I did. Transparency and effective communication 
starts with building the effective messaging structures internally and externally, ensuring that we have the process and people in place to communicate and connect families with the life of our school. As we build a sustainable administrative structure that is focused on not only delivering high quality instruction to students, but also ensuring that our communication goes directly to, to staff members and families, but most importantly, is consistent in that process. I heard that message loud and clear during, the inter during this process. Community outreach has become a central focus, not only the work we do in CBT programs, but with our admissions work as well. We need to connect and communicate with middle school families and students. We've started a new process to meet with advisory chairs in January, in between our fall and spring advisory meetings, so that they can advise us of industry trends, job market changes, different economic realities, let us know exactly what it is that they need, we have participated in quarterly sub-meetings of Mass Hire, the WIB Board, local career centers as we look to grow our adult education arm and ensure that we are retraining folks who may have been displaced uh, during the economic impacts of the COVID pandemic. In summary, I conducted more than 124 individual meetings. That does not include individual student meetings. Uh, and groups of folks that might have met with me in a bigger uh, than individual fashion. I extend my deep appreciation for everyone who was involved. Those were all voluntary meetings with staff. There will be a, set, a third round of those coming out for May and June, where I will again afford the staff the opportunity post entry process to come in and share their thoughts, ideas, feelings um, with me. That information, coupled with what's included in your report tonight, will inform the district's new three to five year strategic plan. This plan will establish a clear direction to drive significant and systemic improvements that allow for both thoughtful reflection and provide us the ability to adapt to changing realities. The purpose of this point report is to create the impetus for intentional practice and procedures that are needed to move the emerging themes from words into action. This process will begin in the summer of 2022. It will really ramp up as school begins again in the fall. Um, and I anticipate bringing the next stage of this to the school committee by the winter of 22-23. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion be in order to accept his report. So moved. The motion is made. We have a second. Se seconded on the question. Yeah, just a few comments. I appreciate you, gentlemen, speaking up right after the agreement was signed. And I think what I got out of this 15, 13, 15, 14 page report that I read was that you're looking at the things that I think value, value to me also, which is dealing with people and dealing with the staff, dealing with community members, 124 people you've met with. And, and I know sometimes people don't think everybody's listening. Sometimes my wife doesn't think I'm listening, but, but I, I do. I just don't hear her. But, uh, I think it's hard to understand that. But, but a couple of things that you mentioned in here, Mr. Watson, that I, I strongly believe in, and I hope the people in this audience, is that the essential next steps for the school district require rebuilding trust with all stakeholders. The trust begins here, inside the walls. Mm -hmm. And then it goes out to the, the town, town council, you know, the, the mayor, whatever. You also talked about that it was clear that the work of the district may not have always been visible. The team and the messaging through the school's administration structure was not always clear. And I've probably been guilty of that, too, looking back onto some of the things. We think people know what we're doing, but they don't. And I think. You're, you're taking this seriously enough that you're presenting things tonight. You're presenting it clearer. Things. I'll just end that, you know, with this. We're all different. And, you know, we can agree to disagree. And but we have to trust each other while we work together 
to do the best we can for the students from New Bedford down in Fifth Behavior. And it's been said tonight by Mr. Williams, it's been said by you, but that the staff here it, it has always been out of my heart because I've been here for 33 years. And I think they are all good. It's just that when you go through climbing that mountain sometimes, it gets hard. And But once you're there, then you get the teamwork that is coming. And, you know, this year has been a tough year. Uh, tough year with me working with many of my friends that here that we disagree on some things, on, which is okay. But I, you said the best, better than I could say it. You just said that it, it, we can work together and respect each other. And as long as we can do that, and I think with this plan here, I'm letting you know the people behind me, people on, on, on Zoom, is that Mr. Watson has the direction that I strongly believe would make a good superintendent. And I think you're on your way. And I appreciate this report, and I appreciate what you have done so far up to this point. So keep us informed, keep them informed, keep them the queue all no let them know and I think we're gonna have a great ride though. So thank you on that. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Are there any other comments? Dr. Marlin? <clears throat> comments? No, I just I, I I just think that um um Mike has done a great job, superintendent has done a great job and um I'm so glad that these contracts are moving forward and uh united we stand. So thank you, Super Superintendent Watson. Thank you. Hearing no further comments, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Now we can move back into the regular order of business, which is the, the first reading for adoption of fiscal year 23 operating budget. Uh, this is our first reading for the budget. There is no discussion or debate. Motion will be in order to approve. Motion to approve the first reading. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Take a few minutes on this too. This one Next one. Right here. No, on this oh. topic. Yep. Okay. So tonight, I um, I, I recognize the first read and. Um, the budget normally in the past has been a two pager that kind of outlines and it dawned on me through the process that um well, did, let, me, let me be really honest it more than dawned on me through the process that there isn't a large understanding of how school funding works uh, and what those priorities are and so in the spirit of transparency and i appreciate the comments by by folks today i want to take about five or seven minutes this is eight or nine slides to walk you through school funding so that the folks at home, the folks in the audience, and of course the committee understands how this process works and where we are and what those priorities are for the district as we move forward. So it starts with a budget subcommittee represented by the school committee. Two members from New Bedford, member from Dartmouth, member from Fairhaven, myself, Mr. Watt, Mr. Williams, and Ms. Stewart. That is the New Bedford, Greater New Bedford Vote Tech budget subcommittee. Quick timeline, all departments submit uh, budgets to the business, school business administrator in January, discuss things they believe they will need. Uh, we also met with the general advisory committee chair people uh, in January. In February, all departments presented to the budget subcommittee their requests. We met with the budget subcommittee in March, and we are now here in April, <coughs> excuse me, for the first of two official reads of the, of the FY23 school budget. First, the first part of school uh, funding is done through the community assessments. So I want to go through this relatively quickly and certainly make myself available uh, if anyone needs further clarity or understanding. In the far left column, you see the three member communities in alphabetical order, Dartmouth, Fairhaven, and New Bedford. The second column is the FY, is the October 1 SIM submission by each district. So there are 347 students from Dartmouth as of October 1st, 171 from Fairhaven, 1,607 students from New Bedford. The operational ratio is simply a percentage of that. 16.3% of our students come from Dartmouth, so on and so forth. The minimum contribution is a state law, state funding formula. You will see that this district collects more than $12.5 million in local money from, three, from the three sending districts. 
A very common question is, why does Dartmouth pay 5.5 million for 347 kids, and New Bedford pays 4.8 million for 1,607 kids? And to keep this as simple as we can, the state funding formula is based on the community's ability to pay and its median income. It is not derived by Greater New Bedford Vote Deck or any other town. It is funded, it is mandated through the state funding formula. Transportation costs are funded through two mechanisms, the local assessment share, which you see on the board, and Chapter 71, which is the state subsidized program. It is its bill of $1,063,000 is directly connected to the operational ratio that you see in column two. This district assesses its member communities $180,000 in fixed asset costs, again, directly connected to the operational ratio, and the debt, including the building that we're in, is basically the renovations uh, from the cafeteria extension and the most recent building of the K block. Both of those debts currently, a portion through the operational ratio of the district, are through 2028 and 2029. Those are the current mechanisms. In the far right, you see the total assessment cost for each district within our community and totaling just over $14 million in funds. Here is the FY23 budget of revenue. You can just flip back for one second for me, Mr. Pius, I meant to mention one more thing. See the 5.8 million in the far right, top column there, and 2.2 million for Fairhaven, and 6 million for New Bedford. Flip to the next slide, please. Those are the three numbers in the 2022-2023 column for Dartmouth, Fairhaven, and New Bedford. So just a carryover right in the beginning. The Chapter 70 state aid for 2022-2023 is the state's portion of educating our kids. That number is 31 million, 79, 812. And I mentioned at the outset that you had a million dollars in transportation costs from the sending communities. The state portion, Chapter 71 regional transportation, is 1.6 million. So those two dollars combined to handle all the busing and transportation costs for our district. We withdraw $400,000 from our excess and deficiency account every year, which regional school districts are allowed to keep at 5%. We do keep it very close to 5%. That's the emergency fund. We don't have a city council, a town meeting that we can regularly go to uh, if, we, if we needed money. We need to rely on, on ourselves. One-time money for one-time expenses. Total revenues for the district, 2022-23, 47, $47,261,000. $122. You will note that we included 2021-22 and 2020-21 for transparency purposes so that you could see that next year we are currently anticipating just under $2.6 million from, this, from all of those sources combined. Okay. So the question at this point becomes $2.6 million sounds like an awful lot of money. Where is the money going to go? So I want to lay that all out there tonight so we don't have questions. Well, if we do have questions, we're addressing the same pieces of information. So here are our educational priorities. We have worked all year long with folks in our shop areas around renovations. As you know, the cosmetology shop has not been renovated here. Uh, we are in the process of doing that for the first time. Uh, the teachers are incredibly grateful for the support of the district, and a lot of our learning environments are in need of renovation. This is the beginning of that process. Uh, that process has begun. We've ordered materials for that right now. Uh, we are expecting that cost in FY23 to be just north of $608,000. I'm also announcing tonight that through air quality and program design assessments that have come back and have been Camp, you know, argued for on behalf of the Academy Administrator and the Collision folks that we're going to invest $285,000 in bringing that program to where it needs to be. Mr. Ruta mentioned about the lighting in that area um, in his presentation earlier. This looks to address those costs. I am telling you that these are not the only two programs that need investment in this building. Uh, I have said this to the teachers that have come to my office, and I will say it publicly. I am aware that Legal and Protective Services is still operating in a classroom setting in academics and has been for 12 years. I share that frustration 
from some of those teachers about looking for learning space. I understand that HVAC freshman shop, uh, abutting the culinary shop, does not have adequate spacing. I know that our IT folks and engineering folks and meet all, there are a number of shops that have expressed early childhood, have expressed the need for additional space. We are trying to be strategic about addressing those spaces because they're going to cost money for us to be able to do. Uh, it's not always fair to be in, the, in my seat to have to worry about addressing all these problems for nine months uh, because I know some of these folks have felt that frustration for nine years and waiting and patience is not always an easy thing to put forth. But I want you folks to know on the committee, I want our school community to know that I I'm listening to those concerns. In many cases, those concerns are validated. We are working to develop a plan to address those spacing issues at this school so that we can upgrade learning spaces for kids. This is about providing high quality education to our students and making sure that our learning <laughs> environments are adequate to support that learning. The third bullet on that page is we are recommending full funding of all CVTE supplies which have been impacted substantially by the uh, economic realities that we find ourselves living in at this point. We've identified roughly $50,000 of requests that have come before us that are Perkins 5 grant eligible. We will be including those in our grant application over the summer and are recommending the remaining $104,000 be allocated for next year in the general operating budget. We are certainly hopeful that inflationary costs will come down some by FY24. We're not psychics, we can't predict that what we know what those costs look like today and the need to make sure that we have the materials and supplies to fully educate our students. We need to stand behind that and fully fund them. As we mentioned in Mr. Pius's report, we've moved to a one-to-one -one device. We no longer have uh, grant opportunities that are, that are prevalent to be able to fund the technology needs. This will be a recurring cost of the district provided we remain and should remain a technology one-to-one -one school. The cost for freshman devices is estimated at 350000 Mr. Arruda's department is also feeling fuel cost increases, uh, gas, electricity, all of those things that we've talked about um, are impacting the facility. He has asked for slightly more than $90,000 in additional funding uh, for that area. We believe at the time being we can support 47000 in additional spending there. Um, we are very cognizant of the fact that that may not be enough and I will talk about how we may handle the back end of that $40,000 um, as we await further state action around the budget. The total priorities I've just outlined to you are almost $1.4 million. Personnel priorities. It is important that we maintain cost of living increases for our staff. We have negotiated now two new employment contracts. There are two additional unions plus our maintenance and custodial union that are coming up on an agreement as well as all non-union personnel with the district. We are estimating that the costs for increases for faculty and staff for both negotiated, anticipated resolution to contracts and non-union personnel will be nearly $610,000. The district is also planning for a 12% increase in health insurance costs and we fully intend to engage union members and the faculty and staff at large around those issues. Uh, unfortunately, I received some calls prior to one of the last school committee members about changes in health care plans. There are no changes in health care plans that are being contemplated by the district office. And so just in case that rumor is out there, it hasn't been asked directly of me. I appreciate the phone call that came from some of our former employees who, who somehow became aware of this and asked. Um, but I will tell you that health care costs are escalating. Um, this, our plan, has some high costs associated with it. Uh, and so we are budgeting for a 12% increase. Uh, $668,946 uh, is the district's portion of that increased health care costs. Finally, our budget proposal includes a plan to try and address consistency in communication in the, phase, in the second phase of our reorganization of our administrative structure with the creation of a vocational technical and academic director position. We are estimating the cost of that to be around 120,000. That is consistent with our director level pay grade. That those are non-union positions, but we do have a salary scale 
that exists for that. It would involve the reassignment of our current Director of Curriculum, Instruction, Assessment, and Accountability. Uh, it is not a position I am happily giving up uh, because I think there is work for us to do across the building uh, to support Mr. Williams and the leadership team of the school. Um, but in the interest of the economic realities that we have, I think the priority needs to be on creating the academic and vocational director positions. Um, and by reassigning an existing member of the administrative team, it is a revenue neutral move, a cost neutral move for us. The anticipated cost for personnel, including the cost of living increases, is again nearly $1.4 million, bringing the total budget priorities to $2.793 plus million dollars. You'll note that that is slightly more than, than the anticipated revenue increases of $2.6 million, which is necessitating the need for us to present a balanced budget tonight that trims $214,217 from the budget. For the time being, we are proposing reductions in some uh, retiree replacements that will total nearly $140,000. The known retirees for FY23, and granted it is still early, the known retirees for FY23 when compared to FY22, we believe we can cut $20,000 in anticipated benefits uh, and payouts that will come from uh, bonus retirement bonuses as well as any paid sick leave accruals. And we are also cutting by $54,217 educational department bulk supply costs, uh, both uh, facilities, technology, and other um, non instructional pieces. Uh, I will mention that the state budget process currently has only the governor's numbers. Uh, that process is going to go through the state uh, representative, state, state, the state house and the state senate. Uh, we are hopeful that there will be a slight increase in the 2.579376 number, which would necessitate and eliminate this budget shortfall that's in place currently. Uh, if not, then that budget shortfall, our, our final budget will be reduced uh, by those numbers. That's where I want to land tonight, but I think it's important that we take time to explain the process, um, not only to the, to the community at large, but also to our, to our individual team members. Uh, again, I will make myself available for anyone who wishes to discuss this further um, as we go through this process in the coming weeks. Um, as soon as the budget is passed, we will move very swiftly um, by the end of that week so that we can begin preparations for the FY uh, 20, for the 2022-2023 school year. Thank you, Mr. Toomey. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Okay, moving right along. Uh, item B, vote to approve a 2% cost of living increase for non-union personnel for the 22-23 school year. District Committee, it's the vote. What is your recommendation? Make a motion to 2% uh, for the non-union We have a motion, we have a second. second. We have a motion and a second. Anything on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Dr. Mallon? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All those opposed? So voted. Thank you. Okay. Next one is a vote to increase uh, Vocational Technical Institute student hourly rate. Included in your packet is the rationale. Uh, would you like to comment on it, Ms. Stewart? Thank you. The IRS, I'm not IRS, I'm sorry. The state of Massachusetts minimum wage is 1425 and we have a student that works for the GNBBTI that was making 1350 which was the previous year's uh, minimum wage. So we're asking the committee to approve the wage to increase to 1425 Motion would be in order. Motion moved. Motion made, we have a second. second. Motion made and seconded on the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next one is a uh, vote to approve out of state travel for students to go to the Locks games in New York. White Plains, New York. Uh, I believe Mr. Thornhill is here to review that. If you would be so kind. Sure. Thank 
good in there will not be free penalty in a long name so far. Uh, this is like my 25th time coming up here to ask mission for members of my track and field program coaching staff to go to the Larks games in uh, White Plains, New York on uh, May 13th to the 15th. Uh, the trip itself basically paid through the school, but it comes through funds that, uh, that basically I, I raised with my program with a, a track and field invitation that was started many years ago thanks to Mr. Shea when he was superintendent. Uh, Sunset Invitation, which is the week before, which draws anywhere from three to 4,000 athletes and guests to the school. And we, we do very well off of that invitation. Uh, what I'm asking is permission to take anywhere from 10 to 15 athletes, but also permission right now because the transportation thing is becoming some type of a juggling act in whether to use the school's 14 passenger van and one of the, the yellow vans if the transportation thing with Lower Rochester Regional falls through, which is very possible, because their system has now gone to a different bus company. So I'm still waiting for their athletic director, Phil Tillin, to tell me in what direction we can go with that. And I'd also like to invite you all, everybody in the back also, to come to our invitation on May 7th. It is the largest track and field event this side of Boston in the spring. And of course, with the pandemic being away for the last two years, We've also now opened it up, not just to all Massachusetts schools, but to Rhode Island schools. And at the track and field, New England Clinic Convention that I run as a director, the response has been overwhelming. So we're really expecting one heck of a big day here uh, with guests. So that's about it. All right, a motion would be in order to approve. Motion to approve travel. Okay, do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. And a further on the question of Mr. Well, what time is the meet on that Saturday? Uh, on Saturday, the field events will start at 4 o'clock. The running will start at 5.30. And the big thing about it is we run under the lights. So it's pretty unique, especially for high school kids. Thank you. Uh, Mark, are you, are you looking for permission to go or also funding? Uh, what happens is... The funding part will come out of what we make out of that invitation the week before, which we've done for years. Can you, can you approximately guesstimate how much the school is responsible for? How much? I would say, well, that now, you don't the rooms to itself will go in the middle for us because right? it's two, two, days two days overnight, would be roughly anywhere from two or three thousand. The transportation part, if we have to go in the bus with them, is going to be at least another 2,000. And we, we draw anywhere from five to 7,000 off of that event the week before. And hopefully all the schools pay on time. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think the, you know what, the motion to prove him to go, but in his request, he also asked for the possible ability of the two vans. Correct. So unless, I refer that to Mr. Watson, if that's something we can't do, but I think I would like to put that as part of the motion, if Mr. Walsh is okay with it, that that would include the use of the van so he doesn't have to worry about the transportation if it falls through. So I'll amend my motion to include that. Motion to be amended in the second. Okay. I'm unaware of any issues. We'll certainly double check and make, and make sure, but I think the school committee's approval, it'll yeah. be fine. We'll double check that. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you, Mr. Don Helmet. Thank you, Mr. Timmy. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice evening. Thank you. I know it's a very eventful time. And if you could just make a note of that and double check that for me tomorrow. Okay, next item on the agenda is a communication to approve a contract with Tower Construction Company. Uh, confirming the award uh, for the project in uh, cosmetology. You want to speak on that, Ms. Stewart? Okay. Uh, we had a bid through our engineering firm, Dagmore. No, not Dagmore. Mr. Ruda. 
I just want to confirm our engineering firm that took care of the specs for the cosmetology project. Was it Dora? Dora. Dora and Whittier, I apologize. Um, they were the ones that handled all of the bidding, and they came back with the attachments that you have behind the letter. For the general contractor, we received four uh, companies, and the lowest bid was Tower Construction as our general contractor. And then there was the sub bids for windows, the tiling, flooring, plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. And there was the um, lowest bidder for the windows of JG, JJ Cardozi. Tiling was the Chevrolet, no, Chevrolet Corporation. Flooring was the Capital Carpet and Flooring Specialties. Plumbing was the Rougeau Brothers. HVAC was DDS. And electrical is MV Electrical Contractors. Both subs will work <coughs> under tower construction as the general contractor who was awarded the bid as the lowest bid. And I'm just asking the committee to acknowledge all of these um, individual companies as the contractor and the subcontractors so that I can send out the award letter. I'd like to say that I'm glad to hear that a lot of those companies are local plus our, our alums. That's great. Mr. I'd like a motion to approve what you just said. <laughs> Mr. Shea, we'll second it. We have a second. That's it. We have a motion made and second. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay, surplus equipment. Um, okay. Sure. We just have one item this month. It is a Valley Box 8x6 refrigerator that does not function. It's over 30 years old. It needs to be removed. <coughs> it needs to go through surplus. Make a motion to declare the refrigerator. Motion surplus. made. Second. Seconded. And further on the question. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, Establish a meeting date. Next mm -hmm. item is establish a meeting date for uh, to adopt the fiscal 23 operating budget. Uh, it's been suggested, Mr. Watson, uh, April 26th, <laughs> two, weeks that, two weeks from today, if that mm -hmm. is convenient with everybody, 6 p.m. or 6.30. Six. Is there anyone that can't? Uh, that six is good. I couldn't do any earlier. I guess in the afternoon, but six. Yeah, I could do. I know you got to do your Uber service in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Marlin, is that convenient for you? <clears throat> yeah, that works. Yes, thank you. Okay. The only piece of business that would be the budget. As of right uh, now, yeah. yeah. Light agenda. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe a couple things, but it won't be much. Yeah. Okay, so the motion was made to establish April 26th at 6 p.m. for the second reading of the budget and adoption. So moved. Made and seconded. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So voted. Okay, moving right along, thankfully. Uh, personnel appointments, retirements, resignations. Uh, we have two notifications for early retirement. Motion to receive and place on file. We have a motion to receive and place on file. Second. Second. Anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So voted. Uh, committee discussion. Anything further on this committee discussion? Any other business that may come before the committee? Okay, public comment. Okay, we have one person that is desired to come up and speak. And that is Stephanie. And Harry. Harry, I'm sorry, I can't read. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Would you Stephanie, come to the yeah. podium, please? <laughs> Community members that came with me but couldn't say, I get it. Okay. 
can stay your name, please. Yeah, I'm going to. I got it. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Canary. I have been teaching at New Bedford Vogue for six years. I'm also a resident of New Bedford. Okay. At this point, myself and several of my colleagues have had multiple meetings with the Human Resources Department as well as Central Administration. We have a good understanding as to the fact that the verbiage has not changed. Instead, the interpretation and enforcement of the FMLA parental leave policy that the school has opted to make more restrictive. It was presented during the last meeting by the Central Administration that one of the main reasons for this decision was the mayor of New Bedford as well as the other stakeholders from New Bedford. However, after calling the mayor's office, they have made it clear that the parental leave policies are up to the discretion of each individual institution and that the mayor had no part in making this decision. It is the hope of my colleagues in the building, as well as the community members that are here with me today, that Central Administration will consider the MOA, which will be considered to renegotiate the portion of the contract dealing with FMLA and parental leave. We are asking the school to allow adoptive couples and males in the building to be permitted to use their sick time for eight weeks of bonding time, which is now permitted under the state law in Massachusetts. We are asking that every person out under FMLA or maternity leave be permitted to use their sick time how they see fit over the course of a 12-week period. Human Resources has stated that allowing new mothers to use their sick time, how they see fit over the course of a 12-week period would be a financial burden to the school. But that simply isn't true. To be clear, we are not asking that people be able to take unpaid time throughout the year, but that the school's Human Resource Department, along with Central Administration, see the human side of the situation many new parents are in, especially early on in their career that they understand it takes three years to accrue enough sick time to take just eight weeks of maternity leave off. And that's if everything goes perfect over those three years. That the school opted to only return time we were required to take off last year for the COVID-19 pandemic if we could prove we contracted the virus in the school. Human Resources and the Central Administration have stated that no one has ever abused the time off under the previous FMLA policy to their knowledge. We are hoping for a fair and consistent policy. We are hoping for mutual respect. We are hoping that it is recognized that we give the students in our class 100% every day and that our own families deserve the same. And we would love for the central administration to continue to take steps to handle this in-house. But as Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. Thank you for your time. Determined that there is no need for us to go into executive session, so a motion would be in order to adjourn. We have a motion. We have a second. Okay, we have a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. <laughs>